Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey guys! Welcome to our new free part series called Free Steps to Gladiator. In this series, we'll cover Step 1, building your character, Step 2, preparing for PvP, and Step 3, entering the arena. In the second part of this series, we'll be covering Step 2, preparing for PvP. In the second part of this free step series, we'll talk about preparing yourself for arena. In the previous video, we talked about talents, Azerite traits, and gear, and in this video we'll talk about min-maxing your healing and mana efficiency, and getting the most out of your crowd control. The first step to min-maxing your healing and being as mana efficient as possible is to always have your beacon of light active on the target that you're healing back up. Any flash of light or holy lights used on a beacon of light target will refund 25% of the mana spent on it, allowing for maximum mana efficiency. This means you will have to swap your beacon around accordingly throughout the game to top your team back up. Try to avoid spamming heals into a target that does not have beacon of light active. Holy Shock should be used off cooldown to generate infusion of light procs, which will then be used for fast holy light cast on your beacon of light target. Divine Favor should be used off cooldown whenever your team is under pressure and you can get value out of using it. For example, avoid using it if your target is above 80% health, but don't hold on to it for too long. As soon as the target drops some health, Divine Favor should be used. Using Divine Favor off cooldown throughout the match will help you save a ton of mana for late dampening. Bestow Faith should be used off cooldown. This will also heal your beacon target if placed on a non-beacon target, so use it on a non-beacon target to get out some small mana efficient AoE heals when trying to outheal AoE pressure. Avoid using Flash of Light as much as you can. Flash of Light costs a ton of mana, doesn't heal for a lot, and will make you oom quick, causing you to lose the game. Instead use Light of the Martyr if a target is really low on health, if your Holy Shock did not grant you an infusion of Light proc. Remember that your first Holy Shock is a critical strike whenever you use Avenging Wrath. So time it wisely and use Avenging Wrath to counter offensive cooldowns from the enemy team. For example, Avenging Wrath from Red Paladins, Infernals from Warlocks or Incarnation from Boomkins. Moving on to the second part of this video, we'll talk about how you can use your crowd control. Let's start off with Hammer of Justice. Playing with the Fist of Justice talent will cause each judgement to reduce the cooldown of Hammer of Justice by 10 seconds. For that reason, Judgment should be used off cooldown to give you frequent access to one of the longest stuns in the game, which can be used to set up your CC chains. Hammer of Justice is usually used to stun the enemy healer, so your partners are able to follow up with more crowd control. However, if your comp has a ton of crosses C, but lacks stuns, Hammer of Justice could be used to stun the kill target instead, for example when playing a spell cleave. Hammer of Justice is a magical debuff, which means all healers can dispel it from the kill target, and Shadow Priests are able to mass dispel your Hammer of Justice. Keep this in mind whenever you use your stun to stun the kill target, since you always want to have the enemy healer in CC if you do decide to stun the kill target. Avoid going for CC unless your team is able to create pressure from it and your team is stable on health and cooldowns. Avoid pushing in if you're low on cooldowns or don't have a trinket available, since it can easily backfire and the enemy team will swap to you and kill you instead if you have no mobility available to get back to safety. The short 10 yard range on Hammer of Justice requires you to use your mobility to land it on the enemy healer so always have a backup plan available if you get caught in a CC chain or swap to. Blinding Light can be played when playing with a comp that already has frequent access to stuns, usually a melee cleave like TSG, Windrocket DK or DHDK. Blinding Light will usually be used to set up your own CC chain on the enemy healer while your DPS create pressure. This means you should always combine your Hammer of Justice and Blinding Light to set up a CC chain on the enemy healer when playing a melee cleave. Blinding Light is also useful if you get trained down, 
Most melee cleaves lack peels, so it will be up to you to survive on your own. Blinding Light can help you gain distance and recover by blinding both the enemy DPS that train you down, which will allow you to gain distance and top yourself back up even if you have no mobility available. Repentance can be played with a Warlock or Boomkin on your team if you do not need your Hammer of Justice. For example, a comp like Ellie Boomy or Rogue Lock can benefit greatly from Repentance since Repentance does not DR with Fear or Cyclone, allowing you to set up one of the longest CC chains in the game. That's gonna be it for step 2 preparing for PvP. Don't forget to leave a plus kill if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next part of this series.